hot take. X-Men the Animated Series wasn't that good to begin with. Let's get all to cringing. That's right, I want to talk a little bit about X-Men 97. And the shocker of all shockers is I don't think that X-Men 92 through 96 was all that good to begin with. I was excited to see Bishop, but as a long-standing X-Men and Uncanny X-Men fan, I just found it to be lacking. All of the characters were like, it just seemed kind of cringy for someone who actually read the comic books. I don't know why people actually liked it, but they're supposed to make an X-Men 97, a continuation of it, and some people really enjoy it. I must not be alone. Like, Batman the Animated Series... Mwah, chef's kiss. The standard for what animation should be done in, in the comic book realm. But X-Men, I just, I don't know. Maybe something's wrong with me. You can let me know in the comments down below. But it's just not that good. It ended in 97. I was like, why do they call it 97? Because it ended in 97. Yeah. I just didn't feel like it was all that good. Maybe I'm wrong, but I definitely just don't enjoy it. But what the big news is, is that the showrunner for X-Men 97, Bo DeMaio, is fired weeks before the premiere. Literally like two weeks before the premiere. The premiere is about to come out. On the eve of the project's debut, the writer-producer who worked on Moon Knight and Blade, well, we know why he was fired now, because he worked on Blade, and Blade is a hot disaster. But I will say, friends and fans here, I and the man you may know as Z from our reviews will kill you, and I want to remind you that this is a, not only is it a hot take zone, but it is a judgment-free zone. I'm going to tell you some things about this guy, and I'm going to say we cannot judge the material until it comes out, because... A lot of people are mad about... There's some big mad people about X-Men 97. And, you know, they watch the trailer and they go, Whoa, my God, it's going to be terrible. I don't know. Look. look, relax. Let's... I am the guy, just to remind everybody, I've watched every single piece of Marvel content that has been released. From Iron Man to The Incredible Hulk to... You guessed it. I watched Moon Knight. I watched Echo. I watched Miss Marvel. I watched all of them. And I have reviewed all of them. So just to keep it going, we're reviewing this. But I don't want to judge Bo DeMeo because he had some interesting things that he wanted to say. Earlier this month, Bo DeMeo was in the midst of a particular busy time at Marvel Studios. The writer-producer was preparing for the launch of X-Men 97, a continuation of the beloved 90s Fox Kid show. Beloved, not by me. I liked seeing Bishop. That was cool. But other than that, I think the rest of it, I just, I just, I don't know. It seems so, all the acting and the animation just seemed like stilted to me. I'm just not a huge fan of it, as many other people are. When I look back at it, I go, that's nostalgia bait, and it wasn't as good as we all thought it was. But I could be wrong. Please, let me know. But as they're starting to get all this stuff together, he was in discussion for loose ideas for a third season. They already did two seasons. By the way, the reason why they do two seasons is because they paid for the animation and it's easier just to... It's like Velma. They're going to do a second season of Velma because they already paid for the animation. It's easy to continue it. it. It's barely an inconvenience. It costs very little money. They don't have to do a lot. So they're going to have an automatic two seasons of almost anything that's animated. This is different from anime because it's very different. It's just, just so you know. So they're already putting together three seasons when they don't necessarily know whether or not it's going to get renewed. You just guaranteed two seasons in animation. It's going to happen for the most part. Not all the time. But now his company email was deactivated and cast and crew were informed that he's no longer part of the project. DeMeo's Instagram account, once a source for X-Men updates, was deleted. 
No reason for the firing was given. No, uh, Marvel had no comment. DeMaio's representatives did not return calls for comment, and emails to the showrunner yielded no response. The, the show is about to debut uh, March 20th, and I will review it. Splitting with writers is is not... They, they do it all the time. They fire people all the time. Not a big deal. And he was hired in 2021, and he was specifically brought in because he brought his identity, and I could show you interviews, but I, I don't care enough, uh, that he brought his identity as a gay black man to the project. Now, that doesn't mean anything to me. He could still be fine, and he was... T- made it a point to talking to the press about how growing up as the adopted son to white parents with a Korean sister in the South made the X-Men characters and their struggles acceptance by society feel personal to him. I, I, I'm okay with that. That's fine. little weird that he's an OnlyFans account. He says it was non-explicit. I'll take his word for it. And he was inspired, inspired the LGBTQ publication of Out to declare him the... Se- they declared him the sexy gay Marvel writer and showrunner to know. All of this is okay. I'm all right with this so far. I don't have any issues. Because he specifically came out and said something that I thought was interesting. Uh, a lot of the voice actors are returning to the show, the original ones. Now, some of them have been recast because they don't identify as the proper character. Okay, we'll keep going. Not a big deal. Not worried yet. I know everybody's worried about Rogue's booty. Rogue's booty has been eliminated, and Rogue was everybody. Hey, sugar. Yeah, everybody likes Rogue. I get it. I get it. And her booty has been removed. Now, that might not be the only reason why people are mad. We'll get there. Uh, But he said, this is a quote from the showrunner, DeMeo. Anyone who feels different, we all have a Magneto inside of us. We all have a Charles Xavier. We all have part of us that wants to burn it all down. And there's a part of us that wants to find compromise and build it up. And these comics really made me understand my identity. I kind of get that. I think so far, I don't get why he was fired. I'm going to guess there's something they dug up something in his past. Just like the NFL finds all your dirty secrets. I suspect Marvel found something. Now, I have no idea. But I don't know. There's no reason outwardly why he should be fired, right? Let's keep going. Uh, Okay, hold on. This is not the article I want. Let's talk about the backlash before I get into the positives about this guy. Because I I see, I I think there was a positive. So I'm going to stay positive on this. About a series that I don't think is that good. So if he brought something better to it, that's okay. We could be okay with that, folks. X-Men fans push back against anger over non-binary character. This part I don't really care about. Um, they're, they're, over, they're pissed over the inclusion of Morph, a non-binary character. And guess what? Morph is not a character that was in the X-Men, so I don't care about him. He's a variation of Changeling from the 1967 comic book because they couldn't bother to do the 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 research themselves it's according to game ramp more for Ked, kevin sydney is a shape-shifting mutant that was killed off in the first episode of x-men the animated series in the 90s but eventually returned to work with mr Sin- mr sinister one of the fans he was specifically created for the show he's not a real character he's a variation of a character from 1967 in the comic books so some people are pretty mad about it, but I, I don't necessarily know that that matters, right? It just depends on whatever happens on. The, I think what people are mad about is there's a lighter take on the character who is non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with fan favorite Wolverine. Oh, please don't, don't do something to Wolverine. Wolverine was literally in a love triangle with Jean Grey and was almost willing to kill cyclops over it so please don't don't do that don't don't do that and uh originally they were going to kill off thunderbird in the in the first episode but they decided on morph after the team was uncomfortable with killing off the only native character oh yeah 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 people are already upset and they're upset about rogue's booty i would show you that they've destroyed rogue's booty but again We'll wait to see whether or not she has a figure. But now let's go back in time because people forget so soon. We here on Our Reviews Will Kill You do research. We actually pay attention to things. Guess what? 
this is the article that made me think that maybe something is okay with the show. X-Men 97 showrunner reveals his negative experience on The Witcher that changed his approach to the show. X-Men 97 showrunner Bo DeMeo, same guy, revealed... Let me just... Uh, bah, 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 revealed that his fellow writers on The Witcher actively mocked the books and prompting him to change his approach to working on the upcoming animated series. Huh. And we know all about Henry Cavill and The Witcher and how Henry Cavill has left the show and how that The Witcher had scenes in it where uh, you literally had The Witcher um, rewriting scenes because he felt they were disrespectful to the show and obviously Henry Cavill made a choice to leave the show so we we know there's problems there so what he said was um he said uh Marvel uh, head of streaming has to take it up there I pitched it off general he, his he pitched it to them and and there's also a specific quote where Kevin Feige wanted him to insert his personal experiences into the show, which is really weird, right? Why? Who cares? Just redo the show. Your personal experiences are irrelevant to how you do it. You can weave them in a, in a quiet way that nobody really cares about. But anyway, uh, he says, I pitched it out and I was hired. My general rule, which he made public, is you had to be a fan, no questions. I've been on a show, namely Witcher, where some of the writers were not actively or disliked the books and games, even actively mocking the source material. It's a recipe for disaster and bad morale. Fandom is a litmus test, checks egos, and makes all the long nights worth it. You had to respect the work before you're allowed to add to its legacy. Brilliant. Brilliant. I couldn't have said it better myself. I just, I, I, I this guy seems to have his head on the in the right place. And when you're fed things by Kevin Feige and, and the rest of the upper management that says you need to include your personal bio, whatever, your personal story, your bio needs to be in this, I get where he's coming from when he says some of the other things. But I like this mantra, and I'm willing to give him a chance. Like I said, no judgment zone here on our reviews will kill you. You could be a tricycle if you like. We'll let you do it. What we want to know is do you care about the material? Did you do your best? Did you try to bring something to it that added to the lore, not degraded it? That's all we ask for here. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you willing to give this guy a chance? Do you think he got run the wrong deal? Do you think it's going to be a detriment to the show? Do you think they hired, fired him out of woke panic? Because I feel like that's going to start setting in that they hired all these diversity candidates because they wanted to put their personal spins on things. Like insert your personal bio into the show and now they're going oh we better get rid of all these people and was this guy run the wrong way maybe maybe if he gets rid of rogue's booty maybe he deserves it but if you brought us a good show with relatively good thing i don't care about morph is a character no one cares about no one cares he's irrelevant so who cares what he is the x-men were all about all sorts of crazy characters you had catholic characters you had all sorts you literally had um, Nightcrawler be Catholic and talk about going to church for forgiveness, and he convinced somehow Wolverine goes there, who's a maniac who kills people, asking for forgiveness. I think we can include anything we want in this show. I don't really care. I just want a good story. But did they rub this guy the wrong way? I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to review it when it comes out. Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, catch our full length podcast. We live stream here on YouTube. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch us on Rumble and all those other places. iTunes as well. Join us. It's a lot of fun. We promise you'll have a good time. We do have memberships. The lowest level is literally a dollar. For $12 a year, two mocha fracca baca daca chinos from Starbucks, you could help contribute to the show and help feed a starving noob noob, my co-host. In the meantime... I hope you enjoyed this one. Like and subscribe. We love all y'all, but I am on to the next one.